This is problem 1567, it's on page 684. Two slots have been cut in the plate FG, and the plate has been placed so that the slots fit uh, two fixed pins A and B. Knowing that at the instant shown, the angular velocity of crank DE is 8 radians per second clockwise, determine A the velocity of point F and B the velocity of point G. All right, now DE is this crank here, and I've called that link two. Now, um, basically ground is body one, this link DE is body two, EF is body three, and then link four is the larger plate FG that the problem referred to. Now one thing to note is that pins A and B are grounded, so they are part of body one. Now I've gone ahead and drawn the locations of all the instant centers, and my drawing's not exact. I've drawn this in SOLIDWORKS, and unfortunately my copy up here is not terribly precise. I had to bend this line down for it to all fit on the, the board I've got here. But the instant centers are labeled. Here's the instant center between ground and body four, which is body FG. Uh, of course, the pins are instant centers one, two, two, three, three, four. Uh, secondary instant center two, three, or excuse me, two, four, and one, three were found with the primary instant centers uh, one, four, three, four, two, three, and one, two. Um, so you should try and find those yourself to make sure you know how. Uh, but of course, referring to the figure on page 684 will be beneficial. Now there's quite a bit of geometry here. Um, and I've, as I said, solved the geometry in SOLIDWORKS. So what I'm going to do is go through, uh, answer the questions that were posed, and as needed, I will add dimensions uh, to the figure. So the first question posed is to um, determine the velocity of point F. So if we're going to find the velocity of point F, then we need to know something about how it's moving. Now there's many different ways of uh, going through and solving this problem, but let me just step through it this way. I'm going to start off by finding the velocity of point E. The velocity of point E would be the angular velocity of body 2 multiplied by the distance between instant center 1, 2 here and point E. Basically all I'm doing is you making use of the fact that we were given the angular speed of link 2, which is this link here, and in fact, that angular speed that was given was uh, 8 radians per second clockwise. So let's go ahead and make a note of that. Omega 2 is 8 radians per second. So I can easily find the velocity of point E. And so when I plug it in, 8 radians per second, the distance between I12, which is D, and E, that distance is given uh, in the figure there. It's 3.6 inches. So that's very straightforward, simple stuff so far. Uh, this velocity is 28.8 uh, inches per second. Notice that it's, it's straight up, right? Point E has to be moving vertically uh, upward if crank input 2 is rotating clockwise. So the other thing about this that's special is that um, this is a point on body 3 as well. Now body 3 is rotating on ground at this point. So it's as if body 3 is part of a much larger wheel centered at I13. And so now we can find the angular speed of body 3 by simply writing I13 uh, to I23, which by the way, this is the same thing as point E. I23 and E are the same point. And so basically all we're going to do is say omega 3 is the velocity of E, which is already known, divided by I13 to I23. And so omega-3 uh, is 28.8 inches per second divided by the distance. Now, I13 to I23, that is a distance I had to find in SOLIDWORKS. Like I said, via uh, geometry calculations, the SOLIDWORKS does automatically. And that distance is 43.713 inches. So if we divide by 40. Uh, 3.713 inches, we get 0 0.659 radians per second. Now, in what direction is link 3 rotating? Well, you'll notice that this point is moving up and link 3 is rotating about this point. So, it turns out that omega 3 is also clockwise. Now, that should not be a surprise to you because the ground pivot for body 2 is here, the ground pivot for body 3 is here, 
the common point, the, the instant center between those two bodies is here, which is not between the ground instant centers, and so the two bodies rotate in the same direction. So it's really not a surprise that this is clockwise, just as the input link 2 is clockwise. So that takes care of point E. Now we can find the velocity of point F. Now notice what we would do is just drop a perpendicular, excuse me, a linear line from I13 to F, and then the velocity of point F, let me get another color, the velocity of point F would be perpendicular to that line. So there's the direction, and the velocity we're trying to find VF would just be equal to omega 3 multiplied by the distance between I13 and F. Of course, F is also I34, so you can use either that you like. Now, in SOLIDWORKS, uh, again, I measured this distance, this length, and unfortunately our figure is going to get pretty messy, but here it is. The distance is uh, 44.439 inches, slightly larger than the 43, so that makes sense. It's not a whole lot larger. Anyway, so 0 0.659 radians per second is the angular speed of body 3 about I13 multiplied by the, the distance, 44.439 inches, tells us that the velocity of point F uh, is 29.278 inches per second. It's up and to the right. And more particularly, it's perpendicular to the line I13F. So the line from I13 to F, we know the velocity is perpendicular to it. So there's our velocity of point F. Now that's one of the things that was requested. The other thing that was requested was the velocity of point G. Now G is on this body, body number 4. And body number four rotates about this point at this instant in time. Now, unfortunately, despite my drawing, this line should have gone through I14 because I3414 and 13 should all be on the same line. So I apologize that really this, this point should really be down farther. Let me try and correct that. Um, as I said, the difficulty is that my sketch here is not very accurate. And so. Anyway, I14 should have been on that line, which makes sense from the Kennedy Arnold theorem because connect 14 with 13 and 34 has to be on that line. So, anyway, let me bend this even farther because this is supposed to be perpendicular to the slot and pass through A. I guess I could simply move A down a bit. Okay. But anyway, what we need now, if we're going to find the velocity of point G, you realize that point F is on body 4 just as is point G. And so all we need to do is use the velocity of this point to find the velocity of, of G. So the, uh, the way to do this is to say, well, let's see, the velocity of F is equal to the angular velocity of body 4 multiplied by the distance between 1, 4 and F. All I'm saying is that body 4 is rotating about this point and so the distance from here to here multiplied by the angular speed of body 4 which notice would be like this is equal to the velocity of point F. And so if I want to find the angular speed of body 4, all I have to do is take the velocity of point F, divide by the distance between I14 and F, and that will give me the angular speed. Now I'm not particularly interested in the angular speed of body 4 because uh, that was not requested. So let me get rid of some of this up here, and we've got a little bit more space. And let's continue with this. Notice that the velocity of point G would be equal to the angular speed of body 4 multiplied by the distance between I14 and G. So this distance is important, and so is this distance. Now those two distances, again, I calculated them in SOLIDWORKS, and uh, looks like I14 to F has a distance, I have to pull it out over here, um, of 24.399 inches, 
and the distance from I14 to G is 22.839 inches. Okay, so once again, rather than using a bunch of triangles and a bunch of geometry here, I've put all this into SolidWorks and allowed it to perform the geometric calculations for me. Uh, and I recommend you do that. If you have some type of graphical package, I suggest you use it. Now, um, notice I need omega-4 here, but I can insert this expression. So, omega-4 is VF divided by I14 to F. And then all I've got to do is plug in the last bit, I14 to G. Okay, And you can see we can calculate the velocity of G in terms of the velocity of F. All we have to do is scale this velocity. And I erased that. My apologies. Uh, we have to scale this velocity based on the ratio of these two distances. So this would be uh, 29.278 inches per second for the velocity of F multiplied by I14 to G. Well, I14 to G is 22.839 divided by I14 to F. Well, I14 to F right here is 24.339. Notice that the inch units go away because we've got inches in the numerator and the denominator. So the velocity of point G then uh, comes out to 27.4 inches per second. And of course, the velocity is going to be in a direction perpendicular to the line from the center of rotation to the point. So that velocity is going to be off like this. Okay. So basically, um, body four rotates about this point at this instant in time, or at this position of the mechanism. And um, so we should say it's off to the right, and it's essentially perpendicular to the line between I14 to G.